Where's the bulletin? Where's the bulletin? Where's the bulletin? Our prayers are joy and concern. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> oh, dear. I have to be careful. I have hearing aids, and they may flip out on me if I get to take it off too quickly. Our prayers are joy and concern. This week, we ask you to please keep Jay McLaren, Lynn Collins, Connie Hodgson, Donna McKay, Bob Taylor, Peter Rumer, and Don McGilvery in your prayers. And we send our sympathies to the family of Ivan Barney, who passed away Thursday, August 25th. Howard Clark has moved out of our community, and please keep in touch with him. His, uh, the new address is in your bulletin. And please pray for the ministries at Delta Toledo, Pastoral Charge, and St. Timothy's Lutheran Church. And in the life and work of the church, the soup kitchen still continues, and it's on Saturday, and the hours are 4 to 6 p.m. Now, volunteers are needed to serve refreshments during fellowship time for the month of September. Please sign up for the Sunday sign-up sheet, and it's located outside of the library, and thank you for all who have volunteered. The UCW invites women of the congregation to our first fall meeting in the church hall on September the 6th at 1 p.m. This year is the UCW's 60th anniversary. The worship team will meet September the 11th after the Sunday service, and the women of Wesley will meet in the church parlor at 10 on Wednesday, September 14th for coffee and tea to discuss future plans. Come with ideas or just to socialize. Our church council meeting is on Thursday, September 15th at 1 p.m. in the parlor. Our stewards meeting, Monday, September 19th at 7. The Dance and Dessert, Friday, September 30th at 7.30. We have music by Laundry and Medill, and the tickets are $15. We would like donations of desserts or monetary for the upcoming dance. And if you can do either, the telephone number is in the bulletin, and it's Ruth Locke. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My memory. <laughs> we have another announcement. A recently arrived Ukrainian family needs a few household items. A list is posted on the bulletin board in the church hall. See Lee Torby for more details. And last Sunday, unfortunately, two people came down with COVID, so we're asking that if you be vigilant with your mask, just in case. Nobody knows where it, she contact, they contacted it, but nevertheless, it's always a good thing to do. Good morning. As I said last week, if you missed this Sunday, you will have missed something really good. As you can tell, I have uh, two wonderful youngsters here. And uh, Lyle. Lyle. So these people, they're here to worship God in a different way. Sometimes we have, uh, let me say the, the worship have evolved in, a, in a many years, the worship have evolved. And uh, this is the result of what is happening in the worship. There is no one way of worshiping God. There are so many ways. And so I want to welcome um, Lucy and Wilson and Mr. Lyle and Sandra 
and everyone here who is here to worship the Lord. As I begin last week, may I begin again this week by recognizing those who are here for the first time or for the second time. Um, start this way, I know everybody except this lady. So, oh, so one plus one equals to one. I got it. I got it. I got it. And welcome back. We are happy to see you here. God is good. God is good. Anyone I'm missing? Let me look a little bit careful. Uh, uh, let me. There we are again. Welcome back. Welcome, young lady. At the very back here, I think I haven't seen you before. Have I? Thank you, sir, for coming. Welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Nice to have you with us. I know you. Good to see you. Over here, we have a young, young one. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, madam. And who is this wonderful person here? Hi. Hi. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Good morning, everyone. If I'm missing someone else, please forgive me. There. Yes, I did. She was here last Sunday. Thank you very much. For sure, if you are here, you didn't make a mistake. At the end of the service, I promise you, you are going to be a completely different person. I promise you. We begin by acknowledging that uh, we are on the land of uh, Algonquin people. And we recognize that this is their territory. Shall we put our hearts and our minds together? as we begin our worship. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts. Amen. We'll go straight to opening of the service, the few hymns. Morning has broken and I feel the wind of God winds of God.
Congregation, may be seated, please. And uh, may I ask the young one to come forward because I can see them running around. Come here, the young man. Eh? There's no doubt. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Come. If it was me, I would also run, run away. Come, right, there we go. Uh Uh-huh, come. You want to come with me? This way. Yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. There we go. Uh Uh-huh. Finally. (laughs) Okay. That's good. Oh, uh, I need to. I need to hold him if he doesn't. It's a girl. It's a girl. Okay. I hope she won't cry. <laughs> as long as you don't bite me, it's a we're all fine. Move, move away. There we go. Okay. There we go. Uh-huh. So, guys, I have something to share with you this morning. Uh-huh. Girl, <laughs> girl, are you listening? No, She's you're smiling. not. She's smiling. There we go. There's something I want to share with you this morning. And we speak slowly so that they don't hear us, right? Nobody's hearing us. Do you know something they call today? What is today? It's a day. It's a Sunday. Okay, it's a day, right? Lucy, it's a day. And what is the name of the day? What is the name of the day? Sunday. Sunday. So how many days do we have a week? Seven. Seven. Huh? Uh-huh. seven. So you say seven, someone say, depend where you are. And this girl here, she wants to jump up and down. There we go. <laughs> so in a, in a week, we have seven days. And in a month, depends. Sometimes 30, sometimes 31, sometimes 28. Sometimes 29. Do you see how we are getting, we are really confused? But it doesn't matter the day of the week. What matter? It's something only one person knows. What matters? What matters? How you take care of yourself. Did you hear that? How you take care of yourself. So, you see this girl, she's jumping up and down. She is taking care of herself. How do you take care of yourself as young people? How do you take care of yourself? Tell me something. Uh, 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 Exercise. uh, Video game. uh, And this guy, he's doing exercise here. You can imagine. Sleeping, there we go. Uh-huh. Eating. Uh, eating, there we go. Uh-huh. Okay. And then, when is the end of the day? When is the end of the day? It depends what time you go to bed, right? No. Depends on what time you go to bed. But the end of the day, they say 12, hour, 12 hours, sometimes 16 hours. Some people, they have 18 hours, right? But one thing I want to tell you that is really important is this. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what happened in your life. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> the day, it's very important for you to remember your life. Your life is very important. Take good care of your life. Now, Listen to this. Out there, young people, I'm going to tell our, your parents later. There's a lot of bad things. A lot of bad things out there. Just say no. Just say no. They will tell you, start smoking, say no. Start drinking, say no. Go home late, tell them no. You know, everything they will tell you, 
shake your head to the left, to the right, very fast. Can you do that for me? Do like this. Can you do that? Yeah, that means no, no. So take good care of yourself. Did you hear me? And when you do that, God will always love you. I'm not saying that if you don't, God doesn't love you. God will always love you no matter what. But always stay away from trouble. Listen to your parents. Do you see how this guy, lady here, she's listening to me? I wish if she is. But I'm telling you, listen to your parents. Take good care of yourself. And say no to every bad temptations out there. Did you hear me? Now, if you can stand up, we'll do something very nice. If you can stand up. Mama, can you stand up, please, for me? Nathan? All right. So, you hold my hand. Somebody will hold this young lady hand. Hold hands together. Hold hands together. Hold hands. Yeah. There we go. Now, you repeat after me, if you don't mind. Lord Jesus... Thank you for this day. Thank you for this Sunday. Help us, Lord Jesus, to take care of ourselves. Protect us from the evil one. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you go and then I'll see you later. Congregation, if we may, can we stand, please? So those who can stand. You can refer to the bulletin or to the PowerPoint. Joy comes to those who follow the ways of the Lord. We will follow the Lord with the joyful hearts. Those who follow the Lord, the Lord are like trees planted by the, ri- by the river, bearing fruits each season. May our lives be fruitful and blessed by God. Worship the Lord who leads us to joy and abundance. Let us worship God now and for all our days. God of all creation, you have order. You have opened the world around us and filled it with the creatures of your love and purpose. Each one declares your praise, and the mountain states your majesty, the ripen field, your generosity. Birds flying aloof sing of your freedom. The tiny ants works with your perseverance, persistence. And what do we declare about you in our lives? We pray that our work will honor you your justice and mercy. May our relationship speak of your love and compassion. So may we praise you, O God, not just in this hour of worship, but in all our walking and our working. Challenge us today to live out the praise we offer you through the grace of Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Together we pray. God of justice and mercy, we offer you our love and light in worship. Yet we admit we do not live up that to love and love. We don't always act our own good intention. We fail to keep our promises. We hurt each other and then refuse to seek you of forgiveness. People must look at us and wonder if this is what it means to follow Jesus. From now, St. Paul declares, we regard no one from a human point of view. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. 
See, everything has become new. Thanks be to God that we can make a new start this very day. Amen. You may be seated. There will be music. Thank you. Wow. Just amazing. Just amazing. Ah, God of our truth and wisdom, send us the Holy Spirit. As we listen to your word, refresh our understanding and equip us to respond to you in love. For the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading scripture, Psalm 1, the English Standard Version. The way of the righteous and the wicked. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, 
that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregations of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And from Luke chapter 14, 25 to 33, the cost of discipleship. Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or that king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is a, yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. I remember, I remember going to a crusade. And uh, in that crusade, a lot of people were invited to go to the altar to give their lives to Jesus. Or if they have decided to follow Jesus, they were asked to come forward for prayer. And I remember walking toward the altar and the congregation or the congregants over 4,100 4, people singing I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Who doesn't want to follow a great leader? Who doesn't want to follow a very powerful person? But in today's gospel that we just heard seem to do something completely different. Or to some of us, it does not make sense. We love our parents. We love our children. We love everybody. You love your neighbor. And if you are a worker, if you are a teacher, you love your students. You love your co-workers. You love everyone. But here, Jesus is using a very strong, negative language. It's provocative strongly and even violent. It is shocking that the same Jesus who is speaking about love each other, he's also talking about hating or disliking your family member. Was that really what Jesus wanted his hearer and us today to hear? 
Jesus spoke those words on his final journey to Jerusalem. He addresses them in the first place to those who were with him because they caught up in an excitement and enthusiasm of the crowds. Happy to follow the superstar. Right? And the eager to witness yet more sensational miracle of healing. They hoped above all for imminent political liberation. And Jesus turned around and looked at them and said, you are following the wrong political leader. I am not a political leader. They won't listen. They won't understand. Look, gospel is the only one to report the two rather strange comparison Jesus makes here. The man planning to build a tower and the king preparing to set out for a war. Everyone who wants to build, you have to decide, am I going to finish? And before you go to fight, am I going to win? Do you want to follow me? He asks. Think it will cost you more than you bargain for. Are you ready or able to pay the price? Of following Jesus. So when I was working on this, I went back to 1300, even a little bit back to 900. How many faithful Christians suffered, tortured, killed? How many Christians? It didn't stay there. I moved forward to 21st century. I can see number of Christians today also afraid even when they are asked about their religion they will say I would rather not to say. The same are deliberately paradoxical and the comparison certainly cannot be, pre be pressed. Because actually it will never be reasonable to sit down and decide not to follow Jesus. Not everyone. A reasonable person should want to be his disciple. And should be happy to pay the full price he asks. With joy and gratitude. Today gospel gives us a chance to affirm once again. To ourselves to one another, to the Lord. That yes, we do want to follow Jesus. We do want to be his disciple. For he is the Lord. We want to follow Jesus. He, he died for us and rose again from the dead. He is the son of God. He is our savior. Our redeemer. Our life. Our light. Our salvation. Our hope. Our love, our glory, our joy. He is not a threat to us. Not a harsh tyrant. Not a cruel master. Jesus came to heal. Jesus came to liberate. To lift us up. He offers to take away from us what we want and need to get rid of rid so that he wants us to be free. Dear friends, to follow Jesus is not a joke. I remember the day I was going for my ordination, December the 7th, 1998. So before I left the house, I was dressed, ready, going to church. I have to be there. I was, I was supposed to be there around 8 o'clock in the morning. I had no breakfast. And I was leaving my house in haste. My mom's house is like that far. And she waited. 
And as, as I was trying to storm the house quickly, she says, Zachariah, and then I say, yeah, mom, come over here. Come here. Mom, I'm, mom, I'm going to be late. She was like, come, come. And you don't want my mom to call you twice. So I went, and she said, are you sure about this? Then I was like, about what? And she says, do you know today you're going to make the decision that will impact your, the rest of your life? And she says, I know you think you know, but you know that I know you don't know. <laughs> While I was standing there, shaking, I look at her, and then I say, Mom, there's no way out. I can back out of this now. She say, yes, you still have time from here to the church, which is about a kilometer, make a decision. By the time you get there, you cannot change your mind. But you can make a decision between now and then. You can go now. I'll be there with you. Oh boy, did I... I wish if I... I wish if I listened... Today, Jesus reminds us that the choice to follow him is the most radical decision we could take in our lives. It touches us far more deeply than, for example, the decision to join a political party. You can quit. You can be a liberal. And then if they don't behave well, conservative, well, they're too conservative, NDP, Oh, I don't like them. Neutral. Decided to follow Jesus. There's no backing. You can even to decide to migrate to a certain country. Just like a majority of us, our parents or our great great parents, they decide to migrate to Canada. You can decide to go somewhere else. Jesus must be more important to us than our family, more important to us even than those we love most in the world. Certainly more important to us than anything we could ever possess. Yes, let us say it, it bold and loud. Jesus is more important to us than our comfort, status, health, and even life itself. And if we don't realize that, or if we hesitate to affirm it, disciples of Jesus, then we are really lost. I look into the church today, many churches, Majority of people in the church today in North America are parents who have decided to give everything for Jesus. And they never back out. Never back out. If we think that we can be truly disciples of Jesus by going to church occasionally, saying... We go to church every Sunday. We say the old prayer. We wear the crosses, things like that. We do the donation. That is very easy to do. But deeper here, because the following Jesus is not by saying that I follow Jesus. Following Jesus is what you say and what you do. They must match. I'm going to say this very slowly. I spoke about this two weeks ago. I talk about love. I say love is a verb. Faith. Faith is a verb. Following Jesus is the same thing. If I declare that I am following Jesus as my Lord and my Savior and my Redeemer, 
people want to see that. Show me. If I, dis- if I say today, I decide to follow Jesus, there is no going back. Yes, I want to see that in action. Because the people will be listening to what you are saying. People will watch your lifestyle. Friends, Mother Teresa embraced radical poverty and it became, in a sense, the richest and the most powerful woman in the world. She renounced her own family and the country and landed up as a sort of universal mother. Have you noticed how her title of mother stick right there? She could be mother to anyone and everyone after the model of the blessed virgin herself. Because she herself knew the work in the love of God for herself. She knew and walked. At the heart of Mother Teresa's mysticism was the cry of Jesus on the cross, I am thirsty. She understood that far from putting us off or driving us away from himself, in some mysterious sense, Jesus has a desperate thirst, even a desperate need for our response, for our love, for our generosity. So she set herself to take care of the world, people who were thirsty, people who were destitute, people who had nothing, Leprous, sickness, poverty. She became one of them. Jesus' demand and expectation changed all that, dear friends. Let me summarize by saying the following. Following Jesus, it means we are to be the same person with the same values, principles, and beliefs, regardless of where we are, who we are with, or what we are doing. Following Jesus, it means politics is no longer governed by party, agendas, or loyalty, but by commitment to Jesus and gospel agenda. It means personal opinion and preference give way to love of neighbor and one's enemy. Imagine how that one thing would change some of the posting and comments on Facebook and other social and our private as well as public conversations. Following Jesus is helping these young people not to lose their faith. Not to lose their faith. Do you know how they're going to lose their faith? By looking at us. When I was little, I went to church and there was an annual meeting. And at the end of the annual meeting, I asked my father, why did you bring me here? Following Jesus, it means everything we can say, do, choose, and uh, arise from and reveal our life in and love of Christ. If we choose to say, I have decided to follow Jesus, we have a huge task ahead of us. Homeless people. I say this every day. People who are struggling to put food on the table. If you decide to follow Jesus, there is no looking back. Even if your daughter was killed or died, your son was killed or died, your husband died or your wife, your parents, following Jesus, those things will happen. 
you will be sick, you will lose the loved one. Bad things will happen to you, bad things will happen to me. Your wife, she will leave you, your husband will leave you. But following Jesus, you can not look back. Friends, brothers, sisters in Jesus Christ, don't let the text scare you away that we just read. We can do this. Christ has made that possible. Let us not lose the power and the gift of his words. Let us not lose this moment. Let us not live here the same person we were when we came in this morning. What is one thing, just one thing, larger or small, that you could do or give up that changes your priority, that reorder your relationship, that gives precedence to Jesus? Choose that and you have, and you live here today a different person. Choose life. Choose life. I told the youngster this morning here, life is very precious. Take good care of it. Choose life. Through Jesus Christ we can and we will. Through Jesus Christ who is our model, who is in front of us, he will help us, he will lead the way, we will follow him and everything is going to be fine. No matter what, no matter how difficult life is, no matter what you are going through in your life right now, remember Jesus Christ is there with you. He will never, ever leave you alone. Lord Jesus, to follow you, it is so difficult to decide, Lord Jesus, to be your disciples is not an easy path. But Lord Jesus, through your help, help of your Holy Spirit, yes, we can. Yes, we will. And yes, we are ready. Help us, Lord Jesus, as we walk out of this sanctuary right now to make our mind to choose to follow you. Help us, Lord Jesus, because without you, we cannot. In your name we pray. Amen. We have another music.
congregation may be seated, please. And the offering can be received. O oh God, we offer these gifts to you. Bless them and use them to heal and reshape the world. You love with the good news we celebrate in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today we pray for all those who labor in difficult situations for children who work in terrible conditions and are paid very little, for migrant workers who must labor far away from their families, and for all those who are underpaid or unjustly treated in their workplace. God, in your mercy, hear. We pray for those who cannot labor, for those who are under unemployed, or underemployed, for those who have become injured on the job or too sick to keep working, for those who are denied the opportunity to earn a living because of war or circumstances or discriminations, God in our mercy, here. Yeah. We pray for those who labor in our community for those who must work today and tomorrow instead of enjoying this long weekend. For those who must work several jobs in order to care for their families. For those who work at jobs we couldn't do ourselves because they are mercy or unpleasant. God in our mercy. And on this Labor Day, O oh God, we offer gratitude for laws that protect the children, for health and safety practice that prevent tragedy in the workplace, and for generation before us who advocate for vulnerable employees, fair wages, and equal opportunities. Thank you for work that goes on behind the scenes, delivering things we enjoy and service we rely on. Help us to look beyond these things to picture the face of those who work, provide for all our needs. Through their faces, let us seek your face, creator and sustainer of all that is. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll sing again number 223. <laughs>
And may the Jesus that we have decided to follow help us to continue to follow him now and always. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon in favor and give you his peace. Amen.